Good afternoon, Fred friends. It is a Thursday afternoon, uh, and I have a really nice guitar in at the moment. Uh, I'm going to show you what it is straight away. You may guess. It's not about. Look at that. This isn't just coloured. It's actually textured. It's a BFG Gator by Gibson, and what a lovely guitar. And what I love about it is it's a thick guitar, not like. You know some of the, some of the uh, weirder Gibsons where they have a thinner body. This is a nice thick body. I like this, even though it's a satin finish. I am not a fan of satin finish guitars, but I love this one. And this has got a couple of quirky little bits about it. It's got perspex or clear windowed covers at the back. This one has a kill switch there, which the owner loves, but he says it's working the wrong way around. So we're going to sort that out. We're going to swap some wires around. And get it working the opposite way around. I actually like it as it's working, but that's it. Wrap around on the tailpiece. I'm not a fan of wrapping around strings, never have been, but it does mean you can have this screwed right into the body of the guitar rather than sat off wheel. So I understand why it's done, so that's fine. Uh, so, what does it need? Well, as far as I know, it needs nothing but a setup and it needs a switch turning around. That is it. I've been across with a fret rocker, the frets seemed okay, but we will go again just to make sure. Um, there is some wear on the fret, so it is possible we're going to need to upgrade this to a, um, an intensive setup, uh, which will be another few quid on top. Uh, I've already had the guitar plugged in, I've played it, it sounds fantastic, I really, really like it. So first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to plug it back in, I'm going to test the electrics, and I'm going to test this kill switch, find out which is off, which is on. And uh, I'm going to swap it around. Uh, swap some wires around and see if that does the trick. Just basically get it working opposite to what it is now. I can't just get in there and turn it around 180 degrees because it's going to kink all the wires and we could possibly snap one or whatever. So it makes sense for me to, to actually just unsolder some wires, solder them to other places and see if it's working in reverse. If it is, I'll be really happy with that and we can crack on with the rest of the setup. I will be checking the setup, the intonation, the action and everything with the old strings on. Uh, once that's done, we will put the new strings on, which we'll be going with uh, early ball, skinny top, heavy bottom, 1052 set. Tuning will be going drop C sharp. So basically a D sharp tuning with a drop C sharp on the bass string. Uh, pretty straightforward, nothing major. We'll also be polishing the frets, cleaning the fingerboard, checking all the electrics, checking every screw, nut and bolt, and uh, we'll give the guitar a wipe over a clean, polish the frets, clean the fingerboard, and that will be it. You tell me uh, that is not worth £50 in your money to get all that work done. Anyway, that is it. No slacking on this one. Um, I want to get cracking because I've got a pool match tonight and I'll be knocking off at 4pm. Just to show where the kill switch is at at the moment. On, off. The owner of the guitar wants that to be on and this to be off. So I'm going to swap the two outside wires and see if that does the trick. If it does, job done, easy fix. So off, on, off, on. Solder iron's warming up. Nice hacko solder station back there. Don't know if you can see it, you probably can't. Uh, take my word for it, it's a hacko and it's great. There you go, what the client wanted. In the down position, on, up position, off. Not a difficult job at all, and it's all done. Regarding the setup, just check the tuning. The tuning needed a bit of old trim. I've checked the intonation. The intonation is spot on. The action, however, is actually higher than I would set it on, on a uh, guitar with thinner strings. Uh, you've got about 1.85, 1.9 here, and about 1.6, 1.65 on the uh, top E on the 12, this is all of the 12 fret by the way, top E is about 1.65, this is about 1.9, so I'm certainly going to get this action lower, um, just going to check the neck and the, re the amount of relief we have in the neck itself, that looks pretty okay, if we've got around about 0.25 millimeters, millimeters at the 7 fret, I would be very happy with that, 
So let's have a look, 0.25 mil. See where we are. We should just get this rock in. Now, and actually that is really quite high. So what I am going to do is remove the cover. We're going to actually tighten the truss rod and straighten the neck a little. I do like a bit of relief in my necks. I think there's a little bit too much in there. Uh, re re removing some of the um, relief in the neck will actually straighten the neck out. It will bring the action down at 12 fret. So that will probably bring it more in line with where it needs to be. I'm still thinking we could go a little bit lower. Now I am not a big fan of playing with a low action or a super low action with fat strings and these are a 1052 set so they are fat strings but what we're going to do is we're going to straighten this neck up oh crack there's nothing on that truss rod did you hear it crack there no tension on that at all so let us this is why people bring, bring guitars to me isn't it not to do that but certainly there's no tension on that truss rod at all there so let's have a look here now with two so there's nothing on my truss rod, so let's check about here. I still need to put a little bit more on there. How about that? Let's settle for a few seconds. Seven fret. There you go. Perfect. So that's where we want to be. Extra nick on there. So now we've got the action, well we've got the, the amount of relief I would like. I'm just going to now check the action at the 12th fret again. It was 1.9 before. We are now down to about 1.8. So we can certainly go a little bit lower, which is what I'm going to do. So what we're going to do is, we're just going to drop the bridge ever so slightly. like so. I'm going to measure again. Now we're going to be out of tune because I've dropped the bridge. Certainly not going to alter the intonation. here okay 1.55 and about 1.45 quite happy with that they go just a tiny bit lower on the treble side bear with me I've got someone coming to the door so I have considerably well not considerably I've quite slightly lowered the action to down, down to 1.5 on the low E, 1.4 on the high E. So we've gone down about 0.3 of a millimetre, which is a third of a millimetre, which doesn't seem a lot, but it is when you're playing. The guitar plays fine. I've also, because I've lowered the action, I've had to lower the pickups ever so, ever so slightly. Uh, but it's all working fine. So all there remains for me to do now, really, is I'm going to get the strings off. Um, we're going to check the frets. Now, when I checked before, there were no high frets anywhere, but I've noticed there's a bit of wear in some of the frets. So we're going to check with a fret rocker once I've got the strings off and we've got the neck dead straight. But as the setup goes, I've got it set up exactly how I would like it. So hopefully it's just a matter of getting the strings off, polishing the frets, cleaning up the fingerboard, getting some new strings on, stretching them in, and uh, the job will be done. So we do have a couple of high frets. Uh, I'm just going to charge these at a £5 of fret rather than add £25 on for the intensive setup because there are only three. Um, just grab a pen. I've got a new fret rocker and this is an amazing um, thing. A guy saw my video the other week when I was having trouble with tools and he has not, I mean, he actually sent me a letter, but he's also he's made me a fret rocker. And this is precision, he says this will be flatter than any other fret rocker you've got. And he's put fret friend on it. And his name, all I know is his name is Martin, he's from Darbert. And he sent me a letter 
and he just said, I really like your videos, blah, 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 blah. I saw the trouble you had, and I've made you one. And he's made this on a precision machine. I've got the letter somewhere. It's not to handwrite at this moment, so I'm not going to mention the letter yet, but I've tested this on my Veritas Straight Edge, and this is precision straight. It's straighter than the GMI one I've got, if there is such a thing. It is super, super smooth. It's stainless steel. It's two mil thick. It's a wonderful gift, and I really appreciate it. And um, thank you, Martin. I really appreciate that. Um, I will do a video of this and give you a mention later, but thank you so much. It's something I'm going to treasure and use and enjoy. But anyway, let's check the frets. And I've got my neck straight, and I already know what frets are high. It's 12, 14, and 19, so let's just get there. Let's get to fret 12. Can you hear that? So, outside edge, inside edge, fret 12. This might be a little bit on 13. In the centre. 14. Again. Just on this edge. And 19, where are we? 15, 17, 19, to track 19. And 19, and that is it. So there are four frets need slight attention. So I'm going to do these by hand. Uh, don't need a lot of work. I'm going to charge an extra 15 quid for them three. So it's going to be a £75 setup on this one. So just basically, I'm going to charge for an intensive setup. I was already charging £10 for sorting out the electrics, but I'm going to knock that off and just charge for an intensive setup at 75 quid. So I think that's fair. Um, but I'm going to crack on and get the files out. I'm going to get these sorted. I'm not filming this part because I'm, 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 well, I'm in a little bit of a rush. It's not so much I'm in a rush, it's just that I don't need to film everything. I'm going to take a flat file, I'm going to take a diamond file, I'm going to show you quickly how I'm going to do these. I'm going to do them really quick. Take a clean rag, take a flat file, my Swiss file, number four cut, super smooth, made by um, Gladon or Valorb. And it's got a super smooth side. I'm just going to check this fret again, fret 19. I'm going to skim straight across with the file. I'm just going to level it off with my finger first. I'm going to guide it with these two fingers here, just behind it, just so it doesn't we don't sit, we don't dig into the wood. And I'm just going to follow the radius of the frets or the, the neck. And I'm just going to slide across, have a quick feel. Still high there, just a little high there. Clean the file, flat side down. Again, steady with the fingers, just keep going nice and smooth. Following the radius. You just get a feel for this sort of thing. And there you go, that's level. Check the one forward, one back. That's good. One back, one forward. And that's it. And once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna take my diamond crowning file a gift from Nigel Roberts, Celeste Shaluthia. Beautiful file this, it's got diamond filings in there. Uh, I believe it's a 150 grit, it's really, uh, the 300 grit, it's really smooth. And we're just gonna go over, recrown. So where we've flattened that fret across that way, we're now gonna put that crown back in. And that's what I've done, it doesn't take much. And the good thing about this file is you don't really need to polish afterwards because it's such a smooth cutting file. And there you go, that's the residue look of what I've just taken off. So we're just going to check again. You know which file, you, which fret you've done because it's shiny silver. And that is beautiful. So three more to do. One, two, three. I believe it is 12, 13 and 14. Let me check 14 again because I've rubbed the pen off accidentally on purpose. Just on this near side. This one in the middle, this one far side, near side. I'm just going to do these again with a nice smooth file. Still high, always cleaning the file. Always check in. That one's done. 
next one in the middle. I'll crown all these three together. Feels good. That's that one done. Always little cuts, keep checking. Check forward, that's all good. Check back, all good. All good, that is it, they are level. Fourteen. Thirteen. Twelve. Again, wipe the file. There you go. And check again with Fret Rock. And we're going to start from 11. Fine. 12. Fine. 13. Fine. These are all fine now. All the way up. Let's go all the way. Beautiful, may as well take it all the way down from 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. There you go, all the frets are level, clean my files, put them away. Not always this easy. Uh, that was very, very simple. But it's because I'm rushing, oh, I'm not rushing. I'm doing it quick, I'm doing my job right. Um, also, when you get a high fret and it's rocking, it doesn't necessarily mean it's super high. It's, you're not talking these kind of distances. It could be a tenth of a millimeter, but it'll make all the difference when you're playing. So we've got all those frets sorted. Um, now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna just cover the guitar. We're gonna spray some uh, mineral oil, lemon oil, you know it as. Especially formulated for guitar, fingerboards, dark wood ones, rosewood, pal, ferro, ebony, think of those kind of things. And what this is going to do is, it's going to soak in, it's going to, one, it'll nourish the wood, and two, it will uh, float off any dirt, any grime, any finger sweat or whatever on there. I've actually put too much on there. But that's okay, we're going to leave this to soak in. Ten minutes is all you need. Let it get it soak all the grime out, we'll wipe it all off. Uh, in the meantime, we'll polish the frets. I'm going to polish the frets with rubbers, not with steel wool, because we have a set neck. If you have a removable neck, it's much easier to use steel wool because it's not going to get into the pickups. I could still use steel wool and cover the pickups, but I'm not going to today. So, so there you go. I've got loads of oil on there, far too much. So we're just going to wipe off the excess. There you go. That's plenty. I'm going to let that do its stuff. We're going to get the polishing rubbers out, we're going to polish these frets. Once we polish the frets, we can wipe this oil off again. Leave it five minutes and wipe it again, just in case any residue comes back up at the top. Then we can get the strings on and we can get the guitar set up and get it out of the door. How's that for you? So let me just grab the rubbers. Polishing frets, really, really simple. I got these polishing rubbers from Crimson Guitars a few years ago. I'm not a big fan of them. I don't necessarily think they're that brilliant, but we do tend to polish pretty well. Going to go with a fine one first and finish off with a super fine. It's just a matter of straight over the top, like so. And I've got, I believe, is it 22? So I've got two lots of 22, so I've got 44 to do. And there you go. I'm going to crack on with this. Okay, well, once all polished, like I say, I'll wipe off the oil and we can look at getting some more strings on. Final part of the setup on this LP BFG um, is cutting the nut slots, and the nut slots here on this side are incredibly high. 
well over half a millimeter. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut these just using my Hosco set. This is a 1046 set, but I'm gonna adapt and flare open uh, just by angling slightly the files. The reason I use these files is the sharp, they've stayed sharp, and they'll always stay sharp. Whereas my Uo Chiku ones went blunt after about six uses. So what we're gonna do is. I'm going to set a safe average on these nut slot depths and by nut slot depths I mean the height of the string above the first fret and I would like to be about 0 0.3, 0 0.35 on the low E and about 0 0.2, 0 0.25 on the high E and we're going to gradiate it going down into that area. So the first one, which is very high, is a 52. So I'm going to take my widest nut slot in file, which is a 46 and I'm going to cut the depth but I'm also going to flare flare it open so I'm going to angle just to make it that bit wider and we are then going to test the hair again and we're just about there and that's pretty good going to basically just angle it back ever so slightly not a difficult job to do perfect next one which is a 42. I don't have a 42, but a 46 will be just about right. A little bit wider, it's not gonna hurt. And all I'm gonna do is just glide. I'm not gonna cut any great depth. That is it. Not quite as low as the low E string, so we're just gonna have a little bit more slightly angling back towards the machine heads, ever so slightly. Stops us getting that sitar type ring if we cut them evenly, and there you go. Do the same with the next one, which is a 30. Now, what, what's the closest one I have to a 30? 36, 36 is too much, so I'm gonna go with a 26 and I'm going to flare it wider again. And this, we don't need a lot of adjustment at all. Go take the 26 edge, just glide. And that's as much as I'm going to do, flare wide. And that should be enough. Beautiful. That's 0.3, so we're going to set the 0.25. We're going to do the same with these three. Now, very tiny adjustments on these three. That doesn't need a great amount. We're going to take the 10, because this is an 11, and all I'm going to do is just give it once, twice, three times, flare wide. That's as much as I'm going to need, I guarantee it. Even down to 0 0.2 on that one would be good. Have a 0 0.2 somewhere. There we go. 0 0.2. These are millimeters, by the way. 0 0.2 millimeters would be nice here. Just buzzing. The next one is a 13. We have a 13. We have a 10, 13, 17. So this end is fine. So 13. Going to about 0 0.2 to 0 0.25 here. That's nice. Last one, 17. And that is how easy it is. So nut slots are now all caught. 
I'm happy with all of those. So I'm just going to stretch the strings in one more time and we're going to come back and we're going to recap what we've done and we can tie up this video. And there we are guys, we are all done. I've just slightly, slightly altered the action by lowering it just a little. But here's the guitar, what a beautiful thing. <clears throat> and all it's really had is an intensive setup. It's had some frets leveled um, and we've changed around the kill switch. So the down position is on, the up position is off. So your kill switch is going to be, and it's going to, it works fine. An absolutely beautiful guitar. For those of you who want to know the model, it is a Gibson Les Paul BFG Gator. Uh, just a fantastic looking guitar, isn't it? It plays well and it looks, it just looks amazing. Just going to check the height above the 12 fret with the action. I've just lowered it a little. Um, I've got, to me, 1.5 is a low action. It's just a nadger over 1.5 and the high E is 1.25. So 1.5 on the low E, 1.25, 1.2 even on the high E. Um, it plays fine. Mega. Don't really class that as buzz, that's, that's ring. I know Russ likes a really low action. He says he's not bothered about buzz on the low strings because he just plays with high drive. Anyway, so that's fine. I've altered the pickup heights ever so slightly. This one could do with coming up just a tad more while I'm here. So I will take care of that. I like to press down at the last fret and bring it to about three millimeters. There, that looks pretty good. It will look good on the P90 anyway, so I am happy with that all round. Just going to take this down just a little. Yep, very happy with that. Beautiful guitar. So to recap again, came in for a setup. Uh, on the setup, <clears throat> I've obviously set the intonation, uh, recut the nut slots, uh, straightened the neck, profiled the frets. I've leveled five of five or six of them. <clears throat> Polish the frets. Cleaned the fingerboard, treated the fingerboard, tested every nut and bolt, screwed in the strap pins, changed the kill switch, turned, I haven't turned it around, I've altered the wires on the kill switch. All included in the price of an intensive setup, which is £75. Everything has been done, uh, even the screws on the back of the tuner. Some of these, I won't over tighten them because they can spin a little bit, um, but not anything major to worry about. They are not falling out, they are tight enough. So that's it. This one is done, so I'm going to get it back in its case. The owner is coming to pick this up this afternoon. Um, I've got both of his guitars ready and uh, really pleased with how they've come out. So that's this project finished. Just remind you of my website before I go facebook.com forward slash ng17. Again, facebook.com forward slash ng o n e s e v e n. You can always go to fretfriend.co.uk. My name is Victor. I am your fret friend, and until next time, boys and girls, as always, God bless you, be good to each other, and I will see you next time.